here's a brief but annoying message to let you know that you could have first heard this episode nine months ago if you were a subscriber to our Iron Filing Society Patreon offering. For the price of a pint and a St. Clements each month, you can get up to four episodes a week, nine months before the rest of the world gets them. Early access to regular episodes, lots of other marvellous benefits, and there's absolutely no adverts or brief but annoying messages like this that will get right on your ticks. Find out more and subscribe now at tftimemachine.com slash ironfilings. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, this is it! This is Top Flight Time Machine. I am Andy Hotbody Dawson. Pow, pow, pow. I'm Sam Nifty Delaney, so what? Welcome along to the Manchester Odyssey. It's uh, in my left hand and it is the 25th of February 1984 issue of Roy of the Rovers. Uh, and across the top... It says free 12 Panini football stickers. Whoa, what about that? What a treat that would be. Uh, this will have been in a plastic bag as well, I reckon, to stop people from nicking them. Mm. There's no sign of any cellar tape on the front of the issue where the stickers might have been attached on with. But, um, oh, can I just quickly show you what's on the back page, Sam? Which I hadn't noticed I'd when to, I sent I'd you over that. the source material. You can like this. By the tr- <gasps> Oh, it's an ad for Return of the Jedi figures. I remember when they first came out. I remember them coming into the shops um, before they actually came into the... um, Before before, the film was out. Before before the film came out. You've got all speechless with excitement. The local toy shop was... The local toy shop was called Toy Cave. I've talked about it before. We talked about local toy shops before. Haven't we? It was yeah. such a great toy shop, proper old toy shop. Where it was like overfilled, quite mm. a small space, and like it was like all. Um, I think the phrase would be higgledy piggledy, mm. like just shit everywhere. And the geezer who ran it, he had obviously a little one of those little step ladders to get up high, and he also had a yeah. grabber. So we'd go, oh, oh, right, yeah. oh, you want, oh, you want some cowboys? Yeah, I can get those for you, little cowboy figures. Hang on a minute. Yeah. And he'd get up on his little steps and then he'd get it down because he'd know exactly where it was. It was one of those sorts, of, a treasure trove, Andy. But yeah, it, yeah. it sold the figures for one pound and later I think it went up to one fifty. And we were so excited about what was going to happen in Return of the Jedi, and they released the figures. Mm. And so we were pouring over the figures and the names of the characters without knowing yeah. who they were or how they fitted in to the story. It was thrilling. I remember in particular those um, Imperial Guards that they got yeah. there in that advert who were crimson red yeah. with the red helmets and long, yeah, yeah. full-length red cloaks. Um, you know, yeah. as it turned out, they were just like the geezers who guarded the... Uh... So you got the Stormtroopers, Yeah. <laughs> You got the stormtroopers. They're just the foot soldiers. But for me, I want my own personal security and I want them in all red. With I, I picture them in long red dresses. That's how I picture them. And I want a ton of them to walk around me everywhere I go, like my hype they're, men. They're, they're, tell you what they remind me a bit of. You know Marty Kane, the comedian and singer? <laughs> a bit like her, the dresses she wears. <laughs> yeah anyway that's because like vader he's got he, the stormtroopers work for him that's fine he seems to get on fine with it but i just feel you need something to spell out to onlookers that i am on the tier above vader i'm the gaffer <laughs> so my security team they look the business yeah <laughs> so it says this is the emperor symbol of the dark side of the force, master of Darth Vader and the terrible Imperial Stormtroopers, the very centre of the Empire's web of fear. Now you can add the Emperor to your collection of Super Star Wars action figures free. It's easy. Simply buy any six action figures and cut out the names from the front of the packs. Send the six names with your name, age, address to PO Box 534, Erdington, Birmingham. (laughs) <laughs> Applications must reach us by 26th of June 1984, so start collecting your new action figures now to get your Emperor figure free to rule your empire. There was always okay, chat, I don't know if you had this at your school, but there was always chat of someone who had an uncle in America who could get special yeah. figures that had only been released there. Yeah, this is b- Billy Bullshit territory, isn't it? Somebody yeah. always knew someone or had an uncle or, or their dad was a wrestler who would be really good at fighting if uh, it came down to it. Yeah, um, so that's that's the back page anyway. Front page, um, 12 Panini football stickers. 
it's it's a classic issue this but we're here to look at the Roy the Rover story if we can um, and uh, it says on the front uh, although he believed that rising young star Rob Richards was too much of an individualist what a big word for the front cover mm. individualist Roy had named him substitute for the Rovers' fifth-round FA Cup match against 4th Division Swinfield in the opening minutes of the game. Dot, dot, dot. Uh, as we remember last week, Charlie Carter got absolutely fucking hoofed by Swinfield number nine. Um, and Carter's been stretched off with a blue blanket over him oh, to keep him warm. A little bit like James Brown when he goes off stage. James Brown would always feign <laughs> collapse and exhaustion, wouldn't yeah. he? And they'd yeah. put a blanket over give him. A cloak. Mm. We should do that more on our live shows. Well, we can see Charlie Carter's bare shoulder, so obviously Roy's got his shirt to put on. Oh, I've just given away what happens. Oh, I can't believe it. Who knew? Who could have guessed what's going to come next? <laughs> yeah, Charlie Carter's gone off topless, so they've put a blanket over him to preserve uh-huh. his modesty. Yeah. It's a uh, fancist. Charlie Carter's going off! That collision must have broken a rib or something! That's a bit <laughs> of a fucking possible over exaggeration yeah. of a diagnosis from the crowd yeah i don't know it might just be that fuck knows but uh so who's going to play and go for rovers and um the referee's writing something down in his notebook like he's a policeman or something <laughs> and duncan mckay's holding charlie carter's shirt and uh one of the fans says need you ask the man who could play anywhere, <laughs> the king himself. Oh my god! It did fuck. And there he is, pulling on the blue goalkeeper shirt with the black sleeves. Roy Race. Roy I'll Race. I'll do this. Roy Race. Fucking Roy up. Race. Roy Race. He's the man for us. Roy Race. Roy Race. Never makes a fuss. <laughs> Oh, so inside, what we got? Uh, racing is indeed coming on. Oh, this, this issue seems to be coming apart. It's not sealed properly. Oh no! Uh, and now he, he's he's calling on the sub to fill the centre forward position. Rob Richards. Richards will be pissing himself with glee at this. <laughs> Absolutely fucking delighted. I'm going to score a fucking hat trick while that old cunt stuck between the sticks. And there'll be nothing he can do about it. <laughs> uh, and Roy is watching on as Richards takes to the field and the fans are all going, Hooray! Richards! Richards! <laughs> <laughs> he thinks, well, the Melchester fans have got what they wanted, even if it was by accident. Let's just hope he makes the most of the opportunity. And uh, the referee is writing down Rob Richards' name as he comes on. Did refs do that? Write down the name of the substitute and everything. Do they still do that? No. Well, maybe they did then. I mean, obviously now there's a fourth official who probably tracks that shit, but I don't remember seeing refs write down. Uh, Wait, before you begin playing, what is your name? Yeah. Yes, and please can you spell that out? Can you spell it? Using words like such as Sierra, Oscar, and so <laughs> forth. What is your name and date of birth, please? What? Well, good, good. Now, blood type? <laughs> Just in case. Star sign? Oh, a Virgo, <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed. Favourite TV show? Dallas? Mmm. <laughs> I Favorite thought you'd be too for that. Favourite pop act? <laughs> <laughs> Favourite holiday destination? Oh, Blackpool. You've never been abroad then. I see. Favourite food? Steak and chips, <laughs> I imagine. You seem a very straightforward kind of a fellow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, 
So he's writing it all down. But look at Rob Richards, how he's standing. He's standing really tall and yeah. smart with his arms down by his side. He's standing a bit like, have you ever seen that clip of Matt Hancock where he's outside a hospital when with he was self with that woman? And he just, yeah. has, he, he's forgotten. You can see in his eyes, he's forgotten how to stand yeah. like yeah. a normal person. So he's really concentrating on it. And he stands just like this guy. He's, sort of got, his, he's got his chest puffed out and his arms slightly to the side like a cowboy. Oh, it's so weird that, isn't it? Someone tweeted earlier the day, it's two years to the day since Matt Hancock pretended to cry on Good Morning Britain. Do you remember oh, that? Oh, God, yeah. I, we, we must never forget what a cunt Matt Hancock is, even well, though everything I, people have been I, through. I, I totally agree, month. and I think that it's... Oh, let's not get into it. It's just so no, sick. We've only, we're, we're trying to do a, a yeah. on-time episode here because of... Well, this is going out way in the future, so if something bad yeah. happened to Matt Hancock in the interim, then we're sorry, but... Yeah, well, there you go. We don't wish He's ill prob- upon him. We just don't want asking his... for it. I wish ill upon his political career, but not mm. him as a man. I wish ill upon him as a man, to be oh, honest. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Rob Richards is giving out his information, standing very tall and smart in front of the referee. And That's Roy what my father used to always say. Tall and smart, tall and smart, tall part. and smart all the time. That was a rhyme he told me as I went off to school in the morning. Tall and smart gets the part. <laughs> yeah. I said, well, I'm not going for a part, Father. I'm not an actor. Scruffy and short doesn't get a second thought. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't scan, but it's effective. <laughs> it certainly got me where I am today. <laughs> So I think we've now cast Rob Richards as a kind of offshoot of the, the fans, haven't we? <laughs> he's, yeah. fucking, he's like Matt Hancock. Um, so by the home side were eager to get at Roy before he could settle down. Uh, they're pumping long balls forward. <laughs> yeah, Swinfield are tearing into the Rovers. They're testing Roy with high crosses. <laughs> uh, Roy leaps in the two Swinfield players and punches the ball away. It looks like he's about to take them both out. He's in midair. Um, there's at least one fractured neck there, I think. But we don't see what happens. Oof! Says one of them. And Roy thinks, no messing about. Safer to punch the ball clear than try to catch it. <laughs> know your limits, race. Uh, and it immediately flies out to the feet of Rob Richards. It's unfortunate. Uh, oh, good positioning by young Richards. He was right on the spot for the clearance. So, Rob, as Rob made ground, he's got Kenny Logan to his right. Um, I think that might be Steve Naylor a little bit further ahead. Blackie to the left. Got lots of options. Uh, brilliant running. At least three Melchester players are in space. With you, Rob, shouts Steve Naylor. Kenny Logan here, shouts Kenny Logan. What will Rob do? Uh, <laughs> uh, and he lays it off. To Glenn Ritchie, who's overlapped on the far right hand side. Look at Roy's Glenn face. Ritchie, shouts Rob. He's laid it off. Thinks Roy. That's more like it, lad. It's a sort of a, a, a zoom in little kind of um like extra extra frame of, of Roy yeah. in goal looking on at the action looking approvingly. On, yeah. But he's got like, he's got the expression of a predatory urban fox. He looks like God. Yeah. Looking over the uh, the scene. Yes, that's the right, God old man. Do it. Yeah. Lay it off. <laughs> but then, as Richards ran on for the return pass, which he receives from, from Glenn Ritchie, Roy must be thinking, oh, fucking hell, he's in the box with it now. Shit. <laughs> uh, now, a square ball to Kenny Logan and Swinfield are in trouble. And indeed, Logan is there uh, right in front of goal, square ball, and it's back of the net. But... Rob Richards takes a shot from a narrow angle, level with a six-yard box, and it goes straight over the bar. Oh, no! Shouts Kenny Logan. Uh, (laughs) Even Blackie's enraged at this. Blackie goes over to him. Ah, come on, Rob! You need a computer to find the net from that angle! (laughs) (laughs) What? What's a fucking computer? Uh, you you know, 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 we saw them in the shop. It's one of them big calculators, but you put it on your desk. 
<laughs> oh, oh. Well, I don't know why you're talking about them, Blackie. There's no way we can involve one of them in a football well, you, team. You've got it all wrong, and I've got no one to back me up, but I don't know why I said that. I think I just overthought it. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the old computer thing. Uh, and Kenny Logan says, you wished it a good chance. And he did. Jalapeño. Jalapeño. Rob Richards just looks like he just ignores them. It's like, fuck off. Go away. Fuck off, Dad. My father told me about men like you. <laughs> Smelly working men with Small rough hands. Small-minded men. With yeah. rough hands and horrible oh. coarse language. Always keen to put people like me down. Winners. Success breeders. It's the politics of envy. They're jealous of my good looks and blonde hair. <laughs> Things would be very different if Germany had won in 1945. I tell you that. My tall, smart demeanour intimidates you, doesn't it? Just like Father said it would. Well, the more mean you are to me, the more successful I feel. How about that? (laughs) Blackie, if that is your real name. Father always said that my private education was good value for money, and now it's proved to be true. (laughs) Uh, Moments later, as Rovers won a corner... uh, all comes across and uh, it's it's into the path of Rob but Neville Jones is further forward and in space nearer the goal uh, fan shouts now Rob you're perfectly placed for a knockback to Neville Jones um, but no Rob Richards attempts a diving header uh, inexplicably uh, he's headed straight for goal straight at our keeper Another one gives him the benefit of the doubt and says, uh, maybe he mistimed it. No, he didn't fucking mistime it. He's just trying to fucking score a goal. Again, from what you might call a computer angle now. (laughs) Uh, No, that kid is just plain selfish, if you ask me, says a fan. I'm surprised to find themselves still on level terms. Swinfield mounted a spirited attack. And they've got a player who is a burly-looking fellow, uh, number seven. He's clearly of the lower leagues. He's not um, built for uh, the, the first division, as it was then. He's called Ginger Mason. <laughs> Look at his bright red hair, Ginger Mason. Uh, Ginger drunk. Mason's broken through. It's got to be a goal. What do you reckon before we turn over to page four? Is Ginger Mason going to score a goal? No, Roy's going to fucking pull off a spectacular save, I imagine. A, a worldie. Mm. I need to fucking find the cunt because this, this comic is in two parts now. Oh, my God. What the hell? Where's it gone? Just bear with me. I can't find him. There is the chance. I've just found this on one of the other pages. Don't slip up. Catch this chance to join the new Ian Botham Club. Whoa. <laughs> Fucking hell, what goes on in that club? I wouldn't want to guess. It's five quid a year, though. Jesus. Fuck me. What do you get? You get a newsletter containing the very latest news and personal details. Oh, Ian Botham sends you personal details. <laughs> Did that on Twitter once, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> as well as the opportunity to enter great competitions and acquire items such as t-shirts at special club rates. Oh, it's it's based in Taunton in Somerset as well. Mm, sounds oh, dodgy. That sounds very did he play for Somerset? Fuck knows. No I idea. Did. I think he did. Um, just going to check that. I found the page. We're back in business, page four. But on the page next to it is the hard man, which, of course, is... What was he called again? Um... I forgot what the hard man was called, but his manager, of course, is the brilliant... John bold, Hard. Yeah, Victor Boscovich. Oh, yeah. He was the insane, bald, track-suited, fat manager. Mm. Uh, and the final panel of that week's story, the newspapers come out and the headline is, just says, Entire Danefield team dropped. Manager acts against cowards. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Yeah, Boscovich is a fucking legend, isn't he? We've I remember when he did. Threatened. There was like a brilliant over um, crossover story, wasn't there, a while back, where yeah. Roy was trying to sign a player off him. And yeah. to be fair, he tied yeah. Roy up in knots. 
He did. We've threatened to to cover the Boscovich story. Mm. Maybe we'll do it once we've done all the Roy the Rovers. Yeah, in the in the year twenty thirty eight. Take us up to our retirement. Yeah. You know, mid sixties. So anyway, we're back. Um and Roy does sort of stop the shot from Ginger Mason. He dives at it, but it bounces off his um bounces off his side and goes over the bar. Good grief, what a save! How did Ray stop it? With a bit of luck and sheer grit. <laughs> Says um, one of the fans, sheer grit. Oh! Shouts Roy as the ball collides with him and spins over the bar. Uh, the halftime whistle came as a welcome relief to Rovers trainer Taff Morgan. Oh, he's Taff Morgan now, is he? Um, and Taffy Morgan, as we'll prefer to call him, um, is thinking to himself, Young Rob hasn't learned a thing. I'll bet Roy will really give him a roasting during the interval. <laughs> Um, as they go into the uh, the dressing room, Roy doesn't. He goes. Uh, he says, "Take over, Blackie. I'm nipping off to the treatment room to see how Charlie is." And Roy just goes, uh, "Sorry, Blackie goes." Huh? Oh no, I'm not ready for this. I'm not prepared for this, Roy. I've got nothing planned. I haven't been thinking about analysing the game or assessing it. I said that thing about the computer, and I've just shut up since then. <laughs> Um, Jimmy Slade says what's Roy playing at he could have checked on Charlie at full time and uh, Blackie says someone's got to have a word with young Richards well I mean that's your job Blackie you know Roy's giving it to you but Duncan Mackay steps up and says aye Roy was right about him all the time the lad's goal hungry at our expense we've got to sort him out before he squanders any more chances. And you all know what I mean by that. We don't need to say it out loud. Grab him as soon as he comes through the door. I'll get the gravel and the shovel. <laughs> Can you see the, the next frame down? <laughs> yeah. Duncan Mackay oh, the rest of the human. team. Oh, Fucking hell. He's got his fucking clenched fists on his hips and the rest of the team are backing him up and they're all scowling at Rob Richards. Uh, right, young Rob, there's one or two wee things we've got to get straight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moments later, as the Rovers came out again, and in- inexplicably, Rob Richards isn't covered in blood, cuts, bruises. Um, I don't know, maybe they've, they've um, maybe they've just punched him up uh, on his trunk where it's not visible. Get the yellow Body pages. Shot. And the rubber yeah. holes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're all still scowling. And Taffy Morgan uh, is thinking, I don't get it. Roy still hasn't said a word to Rob. It's as if he just isn't interested. I'm not um, talking to that con. That's I won't probably waste it, yeah. breath. I am not. I have not got a fucking thing. Honestly, if I spend more than a second in the company of that cunt, I will, I'll end up behind bars. I'll There's no doubt going. about it. So, best to just remove myself. Blackie can deal with it. Blackie could tell him, or at least, you know, hint at what we will do to him later on if this carries on. But I cannot be in this company for a fucking second. <clears throat> so that's the end of that one. Um, Mark's at a 10. 10. 10. On field yeah. and off field drama galore. Yeah, that's always the, the indicator of a good one. Yeah, I'll give it mm. 10 as well. Um, <clears throat> what else have we got? Was there Roy's something else message. we needed to look at? Roy's message. Uh, he's talking about the, um, the, the the Panini Football 84 album, which was given away the week before. Yeah. It says next week, um, there's another. From next week onwards, you'll be able to purchase further stickers. Oh, so they might not have been available in the shops till after they'd given them away in Shoot and Royal the Rovers. Mm. Just a, a little uh, teaser campaign, if you like. 10 pence Exciting. for packet. Fucking hell. I mean, I'm I'm doing half my fucking monthly income on stickers at the moment, mate. Are oh, you still at it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, are you almost finished? Nah. Uh, oh. Must be like past halfway, though. Oh well, keep keep going. 
Uh, it gets swaps. slower towards the end, obviously, <clears throat> because you open packets. Mm, and you, swaps. You got mainly swaps. <clears throat> yeah. There's an interesting bit in Roy's message where he says, in this issue, on the last page of the best of Roy the Rovers, which, of course, is the story from, I think it's the 60s, mm. that they're following again. They're just reprinting it. Uh, he says, I'm seen leaning on Blackie's shoulders to reach the ball. Just to prevent a deluge of letters, in those days, it was legal. <laughs> so, Roy obviously had to deal with Lampard yeah. back then as well. There was Lampard like, even before Lampard was invented. Yeah. Before he was born, probably, yeah. Yeah. So, in advance, shut the fuck up. I know what you're <laughs> going to say. Look, it's quite simple. Lots of things were legal back then that aren't anymore. It was and a better indeed, time. There are other things that were illegal back then that have now become legal. And some of that, they call it progress. For me, it's very, very risky to be enslaved by the notion of progress. Traditions are there for a reason. Crimes because- are crimes for a reason. God is the only true judge. If you want Just to know what I'm right, new- there's something in every hotel room and every school, a little thing I like to call the Bible. Read that. And it'll fucking set you right. You won't go far wrong. Just because something is new and different doesn't mean it is right in the eyes of God. So think on. <laughs> uh, wow. England's future players, it says here. Uh, Roy did a talking piece. Roy Riss, England manager, uh, has been phenomenal. No less than 58 players have been selected as members of England's future squads. Whoa. So he must have asked people to say, who would you want to play for England? In the future. And he's pr- printed the full list. And it mm. gets down to the end of the list. And uh, we've got Peter Hooker. Oh, yeah, I've the never keeper. Heard of Peter Hooker. Peter Hooker. Yeah, he was a goalie for um, QPR. Oh, great. Martin Bennett? No, no recollection. No, no idea. Well, there we go. Unless he played for... It might have been a player who played for Coventry. Is there a picture right. of him now? Nah, Fred, not. There was a Bennett who played for Coventry, I think. <clears throat> well, I don't know who's written in and, and nominated him. Well, be it. It'll just be Soft. like, basically, when I was young, when, in those days, I just thought that every player of my club should be in the England team. And I was actually indignant that they weren't. I remember mm. a dream in which I um, <laughs> was on a beach abroad and mm. I bumped into Bobby Robson and I went really fucking, like, fired into him about why Tony Cotty wasn't in the England team. And Bobby <laughs> Robson was like, son, he's not good enough, right? And I was fuming and went, man, I woke up with the fucking sweats off of it. Yeah, the Bobby Robson sweats. <laughs> yeah. yeah we've have you ever thing. had the Bobby Robson sweats dream? If you have, get, get in, in touch. touch. I'd like to know if there's other guys out there or girls who have experienced the same kind of nighttime traumas as I did. Of course, uh, girls don't sweat, they uh, perspire. No, uh, if you have if they, you have woken up lightly perspiring after dreaming that you had an argument with Bobby Robson on a beach about team selection in the 80s, <laughs> then please get in touch because I'm, I'm thinking of forming a support group. Give us a call, we're here till 1am. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, all right, that's it then. That's it from this one. Great. And uh, we've got a World Cup match to go and watch because it's Tuesday, December the 6th when we're recording this. Hope you've had a nice Christmas, if indeed it has been Christmas yet. I can't remember which episode this is, but there you go. Uh, Thank you very much and goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.